I think I was probably like about 14 years old when I went home and told my mom that I wanted to get tattooed and she was not too pleased with that. When I was uh, growing up, we used to go down to Deep Ellum all the time to go to concerts. And uh, my mom let me go with my brother who was 16, so I was about 14 and we were going to shows. Uh, and we would walk through Deep Ellum and you know see tattoo shops and things like that. And all the guys in the bands that I was going to see were covered in tattoos as well. And I think that's what sparked my interest. And then as soon as I got a tattoo, I was just, it was over. Um, I think the, the history of tattooing is a lot about, um, I would say, outcasts maybe. Um, I would argue that most people who wind up getting heavily tattooed have some significant trauma in their life. I don't think it was anything unique, you know, that happened to me. I mean, um, I think, I, you know, I grew up in a home of, uh, you know, parents who were separated at, when I was very young. and. Um, my dad was a drug addict and alcoholic and, um, and you know, kind of in and out of our lives when we were younger. And so I think, um, you know, there was probably a, a decent amount of trauma that kind of went uh, unaddressed at a younger age, you know, from that. Um, I grew up in church, or at least, you know, my, my mother took us to church. I don't know, I wasn't super secure in my faith. Um, and so I think when I graduated high school and moved down to Austin, um, I think, you know, I kind of let all that stuff start to, to slide back, you know. Going into tattooing and going into starting a family and all that, I was, um, I, I would say, not a believer at that point. So, I mean, I think professionally things were going really well. I had set goals for myself, you know, in my head, I suppose, like about what I wanted to accomplish with tattooing. And I wanted to work in specific shops, like um, we do these things called guest spots, where you go visit, you know, a place and work there for, a, you know, a short amount of time. And so, you know, some of those things started happening for me. I was going to New York and working. I was going to Seattle and California. And I was using work, I think, as an escape, you know, um, rather than dealing with the problems that were kind of, you know, mounting. Um, I was drinking a lot more and starting to use more drugs and things like that. Um, and what started out as, you know, what felt like under control or like um, just for fun, you know, became something that I was doing every day, uh, you know, and that led to a divorce and uh, yeah. Over a few month period, I was like, just really like, I wanted to get sober. I wanted to turn things around, I wanted to change things, and I just couldn't. During this time, I also met a woman who I am now married to, um, <laughs> my, my wonderful wife, Lindsay. Um, and she actually invited me to um, watch this sermon that she had heard. And it really struck a chord with me because I think a lot of what turned me away from the church um, and faith was just like, people would be, you know, a, um, someone who said they were a follower of Christ, yet they would judge me for my decisions to get tattooed and how I looked and things like that. Um, I think that's what kind of started that journey again for me. Um, and then we ended up going to the Heights. Um, and I remember being in um, service one day and just thinking like, I needed to make this decision again to surrender my life um, to God. and. Um, I think I remember it felt kind of uncomfortable and uneasy, but you know, I think I just realized how much I needed His grace. When I realized that, um, you know, what grace really was and that gift that can't be earned, you know, um, I think is when I really realized that there is hope, you know, that there is um, redemption in all of it, you know, and even the things that I struggled with, the sin that I struggled with and things like that were all, um, you know, building up my story, you know, that God basically allowed all that, but he still chased after me. 
um, and still kept rerouting me, you know, through life to ultimately come back to him. So many people out there are struggling, thinking that, you know, oh, I've done these terrible things that, you know, are unforgivable. Um, and ultimately, um, you know, I think that's what the devil wants you to believe. You know, I, I think I struggled for a moment thinking like, well, you know, I should probably kind of take a step back and remove myself from, you know, some of those places. Maybe I don't need to go to these conventions anymore. Maybe I don't need to travel and do guest spots, um, you know. And then I realized that it's like, this is the perfect opportunity to, you know, just remain involved. Like I have this opportunity to share with other people. I have this opportunity to carry myself in a way um, that says, you know, something's different. Um, I, I just think it's the most powerful thing that you can do with, all, with you know, your faith is just to continue to seek Him because it will transform every aspect of your life. You know, I think that like, um, I mean, the more that I try to walk in the ways of Jesus, the more I think it affects my relationships with other people in positive ways. Um, it affects, you know, attitude, all of that. You know, I mean, I think I finally understand um, what it's like to have a relationship with Jesus.